Danny Flex and welcome to the latest edition of Seconds Out Flex Expectations. We're here every Thursday to look ahead to the boxing action over the weekend. And uh, I guess the breaking news is, yes, I finally had a haircut. But moving on from that, it's a big weekend for British boxing. Lots of opportunities flying around. Um, first of all, on Friday night, tomorrow night, on the zone, uh, which is still and probably won't stay, 199 a month for UK fans, although with the news that, well I say news, it's been reported that uh, Eddie Hearn and the matchroom stable minus AJ and Dillian White will be moving to the zone in the summer. Um, if that takes place, I can't imagine it will stay at 199 a month for much longer. However, to the matter at hand, they will be showing boxing from Barcelona in Spain. I hear it's got a beautiful horizon. Uh, with three British fighters all in action um, against local opposition and all with big things to gain. Um, Jez Smith, who you can see the interview I did with him recently on the channel uh, just before he flew out. He takes on the formerly kind of fearsome Kermin Leharaga, whose aura of invincibility has now been at least partially removed by two defeats to David Avanesian. No disgrace there, of course, we know how good Avanesian is, um, but Leharaga was banging people over for fun before packed houses, remember those, in Bilbao, um, where he's from. And now, since uh, that those two defeats to Avanesian, he's won three in a row, but two have gone the distance. He's not quite the kind of dynamic, scary puncher he was, potentially. And Jed Smith's finally nailed down a fight at Super Welter, 154 pounds, where he's wanted for a while. It was close to Super Middle against Ben Ridings uh, when we saw him on a matchroom show not too long ago. Won that one. And we've seen him struggle a little bit at middleweight with the likes of Keevan Ajarko. Maybe not struggle from a technical perspective, but certainly didn't seem big enough um, to take the shots and was ultimately stopped by Ajarko late in that fight, albeit gave a good account of himself. So now he goes up against Leharaga and a win there could really open doors back in the UK for Jez Smith and we wish him the very best of luck. But the card is topped by two European title fights. Kay Prosper going for the super lightweight belt against Sandor Martin. Martin's a very good fighter, very versatile, tough. Um, I don't think he's going to make it to world level, uh, or at least he'll make it to world level perhaps by you know challenging for a world title. I don't think he'll become a world champion. Um, it's a good opportunity for Prosper, although he has been inactive, um, so it's going to be tough for him, but he's a very talented fighter. It's a big step up in class for someone who's fought predominantly at English title level, so we'll see how he gets on. Um, Xavier Miller, his trainer, also, of course, the head trainer for Dillian White, he spoke to us about the task facing K Prosper uh, not too long ago. Again, you can find that on Seconds Out. Uh, and... The, the one that really intrigues me, and I, I still haven't been able to see the odds for this, but Gavin McDonnell, former European champion, world title challenger, down at Super Bantamweight, now up at Feather. Um, see, we'll see how much he's got left. I think there's still a fair bit in the tank. Back with his old trainer, Steffi Ball. He's fighting Andoni Gago for the European belt. So he looks to become a two-weight European champion. Um, I think styles will mesh really well in this fight. Um, very slick McDonnell um, at his best and great work rate as well. So I would expect him I would expect him to beat Gago. Gago's got quite a padded record. I think he won his European title against a 10 and 1 or 10 and 0 um, opponent. It was vacant. He's you know he hasn't got that landmark win on his record just yet. He'll be hoping McDonald becomes that. Um, but McDonald wants one last kind of throw at a dice at world level, up at 126 pounds. And I think he can get it um, against Gago. It might not be easy to get the decision out in Spain, but hey, who are we to talk about contentious decisions um, here in the UK anymore? But fingers crossed for Gavin McDonald as well. But yeah, really, really good bill. Um, three at least um, quality fights between Brits and Spaniards on that show on the zone uh, tomorrow night. And then we move on to Saturday, BT Sport. Um, I know there's uh, fights across the Atlantic as well, particularly uh, Emmanuel Navarrete defending against Christopher Diaz. Haven't forgotten about that. But the big one for us is, and I feel like I'm kind of morphing into Steve Bunce gradually, day by day anyway, and this won't help it, but headlining the BT Sport show is a proper fight for a proper title. In fact, two proper titles as Commonwealth middleweight champion Felix Cash 
vies with the British champion Denzel Bentley uh, with both titles on the line. And it is a really, really good fight. Um, both guys unbeaten, um, young or relatively young, uh, fresh in their careers. Both looking to have the potential to go on to European level at least. Um, and it's a really interesting one. Cash is the favourite with the bookies. A lot of people picking him online, particularly by stoppage as well, which surprised me. I think Denzel Bentley has shown how durable he can be. He had those two fights with Mark Heffron, the first one a draw, um, where he took some big shots late in the fight and, and you know, was proved his durability. And the second one where he just came out the blocks a bit quicker, damaged Heffron's eye early on and forced a relatively early stoppage in the rematch. So I think Bentley um, has proved himself at domestic level. Heffron will not give anyone a particularly easy fight. Liam Williams, uh, aside, who's a you know world-class performer, as we saw recently. Um, and then you've got Felix Cash, who's kind of been a bit low-key in terms of kind of building his career on matchroom undercards. He was a very, very good amateur, of course. Um, works in that thriving Tony Sim stable out in Essex. Um, big, strong middleweight. Um, so physically strong, hits hard. Um, technically um, skilled as well. Uh, but then Bentley's a bit more unorthodox, or a lot more unorthodox actually, throws punches from different angles, um, can fight on the back foot and the front foot. Uh, Cash is more known as, a, as an aggressive fighter. I think their styles will mesh together really well. Um, I'm not going to give a prediction. I'm very um, good friends with both guys. And not only for that reason, I also find it very hard to pick who's going to come out on top. It's a genuine 50-50 fight and we don't see enough of those. So we should celebrate that fact. And it's getting a lot of praise on social media, to be fair. Um, also on the show, Callum Johnson makes his long-awaited return. Now back with Frank Warren, still trained by Joe Gallagher, of course, who talked about the fight uh, in an interview we did earlier this week, which, funnily enough, you can see on the channel. Repeating myself a fair bit. We've got a lot of content, what can I say? Um, yeah, Callum Johnson comes back against, I think it's Emil Markic uh, for um, his comeback fight. Markic is like number 15 or 14 of the WBO. So it's a secure, it wasn't easy to say. Callum Johnson, a position uh, in the rankings with that organisation. Obviously, Anthony Yard and Lyndon Arthur both have rankings with the WBO and are um, promoted by Frank Warren. So there's an eye on potential future fights, although Johnson and Gallagher both want a shot at the WBO champion, even more pertinently, Joe Smith Jr. But I know Lyndon Arthur, who I spoke to yesterday, wants that shot first. And he will shortly, I believe, be promoted to WBO number one, Arthur, because uh, Smith Jr. and Vlasov were numbers one and two, Arthur at number three. And the top two, the only two above him, have just fought for the vacant title. So you would expect Lyndon Arthur to slot right in to that number one position. But Callum Johnson can stake his claim with an impressive victory over Markic on Saturday. And the other fight on the builder intrigues me, and it's only recently because we only found out David Adelaide's opponent yesterday, the unbeaten heavyweight who's been talking about fighting Nathan Gorman, um, even though he's quite early in his career, will be going up against a former Gorman stoppage victim um, in Camille Sokolovsky. Sokolovsky's got not a great record on paper, but is a real tough test, I think, for Adelaide at this stage of his career. He's a big lump, and Adelaide is not the biggest heavyweight. He's scored several upset victories um, over the last few years. He's a danger man. Um, and not only that, it only I think he's lost like 21, 22 times. But only three of those have been by stoppage or knockout, one of which was Gorman. Um, so Adelaide can make a real statement if he can not just beat Sokolovsky, but get him out of there. It's a fight that might not get the recognition among the casuals uh, who tune in because of the record Sokolovsky's got. But amongst the boxing hardcore... Getting rid of um, Camille uh, relatively early on will cause some eyebrows to raise. So we shall see what happens there. But yeah, two really good shows um, available for UK viewers on Friday and Saturday. Long may it continue. Now I want to know from you guys what your predictions are for the three fights in Spain and the main event in the UK. I wasn't brave enough to uh, make a choice on that one, but I'm sure you guys will be. Let me know who's going to win those four fights and why. Um, I'll be back on Monday, 4.30, uh, for Reflections, where I'll look back on all the action, and then the following Thursday uh, for the next Flex Expectations at the same time. Really appreciate you guys tuning in, and I'll be back soon, so leave your comments below, and I'll respond to some of the better ones. Thanks very much, and take care. <laughs>